Hi everyone. Well, the raised bed kitchen garden here is absolutely exploding with growth. It's just going crazy. And the squash is quickly outgrowing the space. So if you're trying to go grow squash in a small space, you definitely want to stay tuned to this video. So I'm going to show you how to prune squash so you can not only grow more squash, you can manage the space and also control the disease, which a lot of times is a really big problem with squash plants. But before we dig in and start pruning, I wanna show you the amazing growth on this plant. This is actually three plants in here. So even more important to manage the size, it is just going crazy with the soil we put in when we built this raised bed. Look at all these squash, little baby. These are green uh, scallop squash here growing. So many little teeny tiny babies. These are starting to grow. I actually hand pollinated that the other day. You might have seen my video on Instagram and it worked because the squash is definitely starting to grow. Tons and tons of little baby squash in here. And I know we do have one on the other side that's ready to harvest. So we'll grab that one out and then we'll start the pruning. You guys have to see this green scallop squash that's ready to harvest. Scallop squash are absolutely beautiful. And this green one is the most beautiful color. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the squash at the stem. A little bit hard to get in here because the plant is so large. And we are gonna put this baby on the grill. Isn't that pretty? Now I do like to wear a pair of gloves whenever I prune squash. The leaves get really prickly and a nice sharp pair of precision pruners is really important too. Now let's get in here and take a look at the squash. What most people don't know about squash is that not only does it grow from one main stem, you can see the stem right in here, but it only needs the leaves and the branches that are above the fruit and the flowers to produce. So all of these lower leaves and branches in here can come off and it's not gonna hurt your squash at all. So I'm gonna get in here and start pruning. And when you're pruning, you wanna make sure that you get as close to the main stem as possible so we're gonna prune right up here next to the main stem and be really careful that you don't cut that main stem. Because squash stems are hollow, but as it gets closer to the main stem, they get solid. If you cut them too far out, you're gonna expose that hollow stem there, which is gonna also expose your plants to disease and to pests. So you wanna go ahead and remove all of the stems and the leaves that are below the first set of flowers, first set of squash, you'll give more airflow to your plant, and it will also help your squash be more productive because all the energy then goes into producing squash instead of into keeping all these leaves on the plant. Now, right now, we're still very early in the season, so all the leaves look really good. But as we go throughout the season, squash are very susceptible to a disease called powdery mildew. It's, it looks like kind of a powdery substance is all over your leaves. And uh, by trimming off the lower leaves here, you're keeping the leaves and the plant dry, which, makes your, which helps protect your plant from powdery mildew and just keeps the plant generally healthier too. So I'm just gonna get in here and start pruning off all the bottom leaves. You can see why a nice precision, sharp pair of precision pruners are really important here. If your pruners are too thick, you're not going to be able to get close enough to the stem. See how it's solid right there? Cutting it close to the stem is what's going to protect your plant from bugs and disease getting inside. Now the other benefit to pruning your squash is that these squash are getting so big that the vegetables behind it, actually there's some herbs behind it, that are getting shaded. So by managing the space and controlling the size, you give lots more room in your raised beds for growing lots more veggies. So I'm just gonna get down here and prune away and make some more room in this raised bed, which will keep my squash a lot healthier and help me grow a lot more. It's really tight spaces in here, so, uh, I'm going to have to go really carefully so I don't cut the main stems. I don't think I'm going to be able to reach that one. So I am going to have to leave a little hollow stem on this particular one so I don't break the plant. So you just do the best you can. Don't stress about it. <laughs> if anything else, we're going to create, be creating a lot more airflow for this plant. It'll be a lot healthier. 
There's just so many flowers and so many squash on this plant. It's just going crazy. And also the thing when you prune the bottom leaves out, it also exposes the flowers more so the pollinators can get to them. The flowers are only open in the mornings. So the pollinators will be out here buzzing around or you can hand pollinate. But it makes it a lot easier to harvest your squash as well when you prune because you can see it before it gets too big. So this is one plant right here. If you can see here, I've pruned all the lower leaves off the bottom of the plant. Everything that's below the first flower and the first fruits. Now if this uh, space gets any more overgrown, I may have to go ahead and take one of these plants out. But for now, I'd really like to leave them if I can, because I'm getting a ton of squash on here. I feel like I'm wrestling the squash. Now as you go throughout the season and your lower leaves start to yellow and dry up, go ahead and remove all those as well. If you don't want any disease on the plant. As you can tell, there's no lack of leaves and squash. So always take the leaves off that aren't looking really healthy. Okay, I think I pruned just about all I can prune from the squash plant. Now I know it's looking really wilted right now. That's perfectly normal when you trim your squash, but you will be surprised in a couple of days, it will be perking up and looking as good as new. But look at this huge pile of leaves that I've pruned, taken all that off the plant. So we have a lot more energy going into producing squash and it's gonna look a lot neater and tidier here as well. Now you may have to go through and prune your squash several times throughout the growing season, even every couple of weeks. We would definitely check it often to keep your plant nice and healthy. Now let's head over to another part of the garden where I'll show you a squash I'm growing vertically. Now, if you're limited on space, you definitely want to grow squash vertically. And you can grow it vertically on a tomato cage or some type of stake or trellis. Again, remember what I told you, squash grows on one main stem, but it doesn't need all the branches below the first set of flowers and fruits. So what you can do to grow it vertically is just kind of not only keep the bottom part trimmed and pruned, but just weave the squash leaves up between the trellis as it grows. This one I didn't quite make up inside in time before it got too big. We'll just stick it back up in there right now. And by growing squash vertically, you can actually plant them about a foot apart rather than two to three feet apart. You can grow a whole lot more squash that way. Comment down below if you're going to be growing your squash this way, if you're going to be pruning it to save space, to grow more squash, to control disease. And I promise you, this squash will be perking up in no time. Well, head over to CallieKimGardeningHome.com, grab my new book, The First Time Gardener, Raised Bed Gardening. You can build this raised bed in no time. It's all right here in this book. And also, I got a squash seed collection for you. It's not too late to start planting squash. Use the code SQUASH for 15% off this weekend at CallieKimGardeningHome.com. You get a free kale seed packet with your purchase. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.